Hey guys, what's going on? Today I'm going to be talking about the Music Trending Year Predictor Project, a project that my team members Horatio, Ryan, and myself have worked on over the past couple of months. So have you ever just been on a drive and you're hearing this tune of this song that you really like and you want to know more about it, possibly when the song blew up, possibly when the trending year for this song was, and you think to yourself, can we leverage artificial intelligence and machine learning to accomplish this? You know, if we upload a digital file of the song, can we figure out what the trending year of the song was? So the motivation behind this is that being able to accurately predict the trending year of a song allows for better recommendation of music and better curated playlists. Culturally, this also allows us to better analyze and identify trends in music. So how can we leverage AI and ML? Well, there are many classical models, as you can see here, and a deep learning algorithm, CNNs, that could accomplish this. And through this project, we will cover all the different types of implementations. But first of all, let's jump into decision trees. Uh, they take on a list of continuous or discrete values as the input, in our case, we want the continuous values because release here is continuous. And furthermore, this returns a single continuous, which this is what we want, or discrete value as the output. This performs a sequence of tests against the input and each node in the tree represents a test result of the input attribute. The leaves of the tree are possible values that could be returned by the decision tree. And as a caveat, decision trees could be huge and the results could be inconclusive without sufficient data. A random forest, this is like going more into decision trees. Basically, we can split the number of trees, the number of test data and the test per tree into many trees, running in parallel, training in parallel. And random sampling for these inputs can also be done. And this is a, this is a bonus because the extra element of randomness can prevent overfitting. Results are aggregated then through the model votes or taking the average across all trees. Linear regression. This is a machine learning algorithm where the target output is continuous and has a continuous slope. The training data is used to draw a slope to predict the future output. And the slope is optimized to minimize the error. And linear regression is preferred over logistic regression because the release year is continuous. Support vector regression, SVRs. This is commonly used for classification problems in ML. And this outputs continuous values as well. Data is separated into different groupings in a multidimensional space by a hyperplane. And the, the key thing is that this hyperplane is used to represent data within the margin of error rather than to divide the data into separate groups. The data is fitted so that most of these points lie within the boundary line. And finally, we have the CNNs, convolutional neural networks. This is a result of combining neural networks and convolutions together. And the neural networks contain artificial neurons. Each neuron consists of a series of inputs and a bias for each specific weight and an activator function to produce a result. Each step involves convolving chosen features on the input by sliding the filter across input matrix and, and applying the dot product, as you can see in the image here. The tensors are formed by the kernels of the input and those will be the next set of the convolutions. This process is repeated several times for the next set of convolutions as well. Next up, Ryan will talk to you guys about the challenges that we run into. Some of the challenges we ran into. So we figured out that adapting similar models for different problems can be very difficult. Uh, for example, we used a pre-existing library for music genre classification, and we tried to adapt that for, to music trending year prediction. And we found that that was very difficult because the hyperparameter tuning, uh, the feature extractions were all different. For example, for genre classification, a tempo might be a good feature to extract, but for music trending year prediction, feature is not, or tempo is not a good feature because it isn't a very good indication of what year a song was released. Also, we had to change all the classification models in the original genre classification repo to be regression models because music genre classification is a classification problem, whereas music trending year is a regression problem. And also, uh, after we trained our models, it was hard to determine whether our models were performing ideally because there's no other models to compare it to given that music uh, trending year prediction is a no novel problem that hasn't really been explored before. Uh, the classical models took around five hours to train, whereas the CNN took around six hours to train. 
uh, we use scikit-learn for the classical models and PyTorch for the CNNs. For the demo, if we look on the terminal window here, uh, we are in the classical, direct, classical models directory of our project, and we run a Python script and we specify the model that we generate from a different script, as you can see here, pipe RF, so that's the random forest model, and then we give it a song. And when we run the code, it'll run the, the song against the model, and then it'll output a year uh, which is the prediction of when the song was released. So as you can see here, uh, the model thinks the song was released in 1997 when it was actually released in 2002, which is not a bad prediction at all. For the convolutional neural network implementation, it's very easy to get started in actually determining and predicting what the trending year of a song would be. So we can simply call our Python interpreter. Afterwards, we'd call getgenre.py, and then we'd simply provide a link, the file path, to where we would have the song. So for a 1980 song, let's give this a try. We can pick one of our songs from here, so we can call Funky Town Lyrics. So we press Enter, and after this, the CNN, it'll run through the CNN, and then it'll actually compute a prediction for different sub-segments of the song, and then at the end, it'll cumulatively calculate a predicted year. So we want to be around 1980 for this, so let's see what the model predicts. It predicts 1977, which is pretty good. Let's try something else now. So we can also do user bin python 3.8, get genre.py, and now we can try something like, let's try something from uh, 2017. We can do this uh, Ed Sheeran song. So again, we do the same thing. It's going to calculate for all the smaller subsegments and then at the end compute a result. The reason the subsegments are actually smaller numbers and they're not, for example, in the 1900s or the 2000s is that it's actually calculating an offset from 1960, which is the way we standardize our results. So for this one, we got 2013, which is again pretty close. So yeah, this is a, an overview of how to run the CNN implementation. Performance results. The best performance was achieved using the convolutional neural network. Across 60 years of songs, ranging from songs from the 1960s to 2020, we applied mean absolute error for each of the different models. The best guess would be 1990. Not knowing anything about the song, you can simply predict 1990 and you get a mean absolute error on average of 15. However, we achieved a mean absolute error of just over 7 using convolutional neural networks. On the right side, we can see the results for mean absolute error for the different models. We have from the worst being 11.60 years for decision trees, all the way to the best, which is convolutional neural networks at 7.2 years. We can see here, we can calculate and plot the number of songs predicted by absolute error. We see here convolutional neural networks tend to have somewhere between 0 to 6 years off from the actual release year. Similarly, we can see for linear regression, random forest regression, and support vector machine, the results tend to be worse, and you can see more values further on the right side of this plot. If you remove the absolute value, we can see the number of years difference is sometimes a little bit negatively skewed. We see here that certain models, for example, the decision tree, tends to report songs claiming that they were released slightly earlier than they were actually released in real life, which is an interesting observation. More specifically for linear regression, we get a mean absolute error of 10.68 years. We can see that 27.21% of results are within 5 years, which is okay, but we see that only 72.79% of results are within 15 years. This means that simply stating that a song was released in 1990 is better more than 25% of the time than the model from linear regression. After 19 years of absolute difference, the results become fairly consistent we get little reports of songs that far out. For decision trees, we get a mean absolute error of 11.6 years. We have that 68% of results are within 15 years, and only 26.53% of results are within 5 years. And this likewise has a decrease after 19 years, with little reported occurrences of songs being reported that far off. For random forest, we have a mean absolute error of 9.47 years, which is moderate performance. We also have around 26.53% of results within 5 years, but 82.99% of results are within 15 years, which is fairly good. And the number of songs reported 
with absolute prediction error past 13 years is fairly minimal. Support vector regression performs better. The mean absolute error is 8.36 years. We have no songs reported after 31 years, which is interesting. 36% of results are within 5 years, and 87.76% of results are within 15 years. The CNN has the best performance. The mean absolute error is within 7.2 years, and 53.57% of results are within 5 years. And we have 87.93% of results within 15 years. There's a strong positive skew, but there's still some outliers, even past the 30-year mark. So, what are our final conclusions? Convolutional neural networks performed very well. And classical machine learning models perform poor. You can see in these charts that CNN was performing the best, followed by support vector regression, random forest, linear regression, and lastly we had decision tree.